thank you very much for the invitation to present this paper, Free Writing and Public Service Delivery. Um, and we provide experimental evidence from India. Um, um, this is joint work with Alex Arman from Nova School of Business and Economics and a CPR affiliate, Rita Ausberg um, from the Institute for Fiscal Studies and myself, an assistant professor in economics at the University of St. Andrews and a research associate at the IFS. Um, so, we start the motivation um, by thinking a little bit about the substitutability between free riding and accessing basic services in developing cities. Um, and the key problem is that limited access to basic public services are forcing citizens to satisfy their needs by free riding on common property and open access resources. Some examples of these are poor uh, access to sanitation facilities and garbage processing um, services that lead waste to be disposed in the environment. Um, also low quality piped water is um, incentivizing people to buy more uh, bottled water and that's generating plastic pollution or unreliable electricity networks are forcing citizens to use uh, um, to, to burn coal, coal, and that is essentially generating greenhouse gas emission. Um, and while the health and social costs of this sort of behaviors are well, well established in the literature, there's little understanding on how to limit free riding in poor institutional settings. So it's not clear whether just fixing this and providing access to the service is going to lead to in, improving this, the effect on the environment. And essentially, that's what we study in this paper. We ask the question, can provision of high quality basic services eradicate free riding? And we study how incentivizing the quality of, of service provision impacts provider and user behavior and their interactions. And we find an important trade-off. We find that improvements in service delivery are uh, done at the expense of environmental quality and public health. Essentially, free riding is increasing even further. Um, we're gonna we're gonna present uh, a story and, and and the mechanisms behind this by using a field experiment in the slums of two major Indian cities in which we track 110 facilities and their catchment area and 1,500 potential free riders over the period of one year. We're gonna be conducting five follow-up rounds within that year, collecting lots of data with various novel behavioral measurements. And the context in which we study this is of shared sanitation facilities in densely populated low income urban areas in India, which are um, commonly known as slums. So a big preview of the findings. Uh, it's not as straightforward as it may seem, but actually in increasing service quality can be achieved by pushing structural qualities. So essentially how the whole infrastructure at the core of the service is looking. Uh, and mostly by incentivizing providers' effort. Um, and we contribute further to the literature on infrastructure, which Duflo uh, conducts a review of it in focusing on how to overcome obstacles to public infrastructure maintenance, which has been completely overseen by this stream of literature. We find that uh, that is accompanied by a, re by a reduction in non-payment, but also by an increasing monitoring efforts from the caretaker or the provider which is essentially uh, leading to, to some sort of screen scheming among users that are leading to greater free riding and worsening and jeopardizing public health even further. And, and by that, we contribute also to the stream of the literature that focuses on extrinsic rewards. And we, we, we were able to talk to the mixed evidence on the multitasking problem um, when trying to incentivize effort. We find that among uh, potential free riders, there is an increase in the demand for public intervention in public service quality, while there is no change in their private willingness to pay. So uh, this essentially is evidence of the perceived um, service quality being more of a right, and that that essentially is leading to a greater political participation. Um, through structural estimates, we are able to find that free access to services wouldn't be enough to eradicate free riding in slums. And if anything, a negative effective fee would be needed. And we're gonna be discussing which are these implications for policy. 
So a little bit more about the context and why is it relevant and important to study this issue in, uh, in urban slums. So in 2020, 40% of the world's population still lacked access to safely managed sanitation in their house. And even those that have access to it, um, um, it is estimated that around 80% of all the human uh, waste that is collected and also just directly discharged uh, goes into the environment, which is an open access resource for all of us. And slums in low and middle income countries, uh, where more than 1 billion people worldwide live, are an extreme case of lacks of access to sanitation and high free riding in the form of open defecation in areas in which people live nearby. These are essentially densely populated urban areas. Um, and the high rates of OD have been estimated to cause high mortality rates and long lasting consequences on health and, hum and human capital accumulation. We particularly will be studying community toilets in the slums of India, which are paid to use shared sanitation facilities. This is a sailing model in slums where access to private sanitation is constrained. Um, it's a model that exists in other Southeast Asian countries and in many African countries as well. Uh, these community toilets are managed by the, the provider that is giving the face to the public is essentially called the caretaker. And it's in charge of the maintenance, the routine maintenance of the, of the facility, plus the fee collection that is gonna generate the revenues that is gonna sustain that maintenance. But we find a vicious cycle in, in the provision of this basic service. We find that community toilets are in degrading status, which is associated with a very low willingness to pay and accompanied by a high non-payment, which obviously results in low, risk, low, low revenues and perpetuating this vicious cycle of degrading status that ultimately leads to low willingness to pay high non-payment and so on. So at baseline, you can see here on the left-hand side graph that we are presenting the distribution of uh, an incentivized measurement of willingness to pay for a single use of the community toilet. On the y-axis is the share of the slum residents that we uh, interview, which are the potential free riders. And on the x-axis is the willingness to pay in rupees, where the market price is here is five rupees is what all of these community toilets uh, charge for one use. And you can see that um, more than 30% of the users have a willingness to pay equal to zero. So they are really not willing to pay at all for this facility. And there is great variation, but the median is like 1.5 rupees out of the five rupees that these facilities cost. And on the right hand side, you can see the distribution of non payment, the share of the users that are not paying to use the fee, which we collect through observations and tally counts. Um, and on the y axis is the share of the community toilets and on the x axis the share of the users that are not paying when they enter the community toilet. And only 20% of the community toilets have zero non payment and there is a large variation in the share of users that are not paying across community toilets to the extreme that five in five percent of the community toilets that are supposed to be funded by user fees none of the users are paying the fee so enforcing fee payment is is quite challenging in this environment and we're also going to be studying that like the determinants of of uh, of, of of non payment so the context is uh in one of the mostly densely populated and largest states in India, Uttar Pradesh, and in two key cities, Lagno and Kampur, which are representative of, have slums that are representative of all over India uh, in terms of their socioeconomic characteristics and, and demographics, and also to other big cities of Southeast Asia um, and Africa. So I'm gonna give you a bit of details about the interventions uh, that we provide. So, um, so essentially the, the big treatment arm is an uh, incentivizing maintenance among the providers through the following order interventions. The first one is a one-off grant, which is essentially a big push to the structural quality of the community toilets. Um, and the grant that we provide through uh, our partner NGO is equivalent to around 90% of the monthly operation and maintenance costs 
of an adequate quality community toilet. And the caretaker can choose between different packages. Um, and this is how it looks like. For example, they can choose between deep cleaning um, before and after. This is how the facility would look like. Repairs that are important, like doors and locks or functional toilets, sinks, um, to make the facility um, fully functional and attract users. And then we go back and we collect data and the impacts that we're gonna be estimating then, we call them as impacts estimated during the grant period. Then we return and we offer, we offer caretakers uh, financial rewards. And we tell them that to sustain this big initial push we have given, they can achieve uh, up to one third of their monthly salary every two months, we go back four times, conditional on achieving uh, high cleanliness in the facility. Every time we uh, offer and pay the, the financial rewards, we go back and we collect data and we call that the estimates during that period, the incentive period. Can, can I so, just ask to yeah. clarification? So, but usually the caretaker is, is paid only uh, half of the fees he or she collects, or how, how does yeah. that work without your intervention? Yeah, that's a great point to understand how the financial rewards can work. So, the caretakers have a goal that they have to achieve in terms of revenue per per month, um, and then they are paid a fixed salary. If in case they cannot achieve the goal, they would be having a reduction in their salary. So they already have some sort of incentive to collect revenues. Normally they achieve that goal because it's not that high, but then revenues are so low that whatever is reinvested in the community toilet is not enough to keep it as a high quality. So these community toilets are resource constraints, constrained. So essentially these uh, financial rewards are quite, quite high. Um, given their low socioeconomic status and have the potential to actually incentivize uh, effort even above and beyond what they what already this model is using for them. So the field experiment is conducted in 110 catchment areas of community toilet and we allocate 40 to the control group and 70 to the maintenance treatment arm. We also have a sub, sub sample of the maintenance treatment arm that is allocated to sensitization campaign. We discussed the effects of that in the paper, but for the interest of time now, we're going to just be focusing on the, on the main uh, um, uh, treatment effect of the maintenance intervention, which is the, 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 the main one driving the results, the key results. Uh, we collect a wide array of data of the facilities, caretakers, and potential free riders. Um, we conduct several rounds of surveys. Um, we conduct extensive efforts to, to, to um, perform a census in all the community toilets, all the facilities, and all slum uh, residents. Uh, then we go back, uh, we, we conduct a baseline survey and three uh, follow-up rounds for household and individual level outcomes and five follow-up rounds for community toilet um, observations and, and surveys to the caretaker. Um, we also uh, collect data from observers, for example, for non-payment, we conduct a tally count during uh, rush hour in which most residents are using the community toilet. Um, we collect bacteria presence to measure quite uh, accurately the health risk of the community toilets. And importantly, we also conduct some lab on the field experiments with potential free riders. So we elicit willingness to pay for using the community toilet. Um, I'll go back to that and explain a bit better how we do that, as well as how we measure demand for public intervention in operation and maintenance, and maintenance of, the, of the service and free riding in the community. Um, we also perform uh, some modified dictator game to measure preferences and for social motivation for the cause and a public good game to measure if we have affected cooperation. But we're gonna be focusing on these two key ones who are the, the key outcomes that we wanna, we wanna observe if we are shifting on the other side of the market on the demand, um, on the demand side from this supply side intervention. So the specification in this case is quite simple. We just have one treatment arm, which is a maintenance treatment arm, TJ, beta one is gonna be capturing the effect of this maintenance uh, uh, intervention on different outcomes at the community toilet level and 
the uh, potential free rider levels on both sides of the market. Um, we, we find that there's baseline balance in all observables at baseline. So we are uh, confident that beta one is capturing the causal effects. Uh, we conduct several tests in support of that. We find that attrition is orthogonal to treatment allocation. But um, we, on top of that, also estimate the effects by inverse probability weights to deal with higher attrition in, in some rounds that can be correlated with some observables. Um, we also present, well, everything in the appendix in our paper, uh, an ANCOVA model, um, a double post lasso using machine learning to, to pick controls, uh, baseline controls, and we also use causal forests to find heterogeneous treatment effects, but we find that the effects are quite homogeneous. And we also adjust uh, the p-values for multiple hypothesis testing, since we are going to see we have many outcomes. Okay, so the first uh, findings are that, indeed, our intervention um, improved the quality of the service provided. Um, so what I'm going to be presenting now in the graphs is the coefficient plots, the treatment effect on the y-axis, and on the x-axis is going to be the months from baseline until we collect that round. The grand period goes between uh, uh, um, the one and the third month from the baseline is when we collect data right after the grant is provided. And then between three and 12 months after the baseline is where we're going to be going back after the financial rewards to the provider the caretaker are provided. Um, and what we find is that the likelihood of a community toilet being in the top of the distribution in quality increases by around um, 18 percentage points, which, is, which translates to an increase of 66% over the likelihood of high quality provision in the control mean. Um, and we find that while structural maintenance increases during the grant period after the big push on the core infrastructure of the service, we find that actually, if anything, what has been producing that increase in overall quality is mostly due to the routine maintenance conducted by the caretaker. But obviously, this is capturing the combination of the push, the initial push, and the release in the constraints to uh, structural quality plus sustaining this through financial incentives. So can I ask, uh, how did you pick the uh, amount of a financial incentive? I mean, why did you pick like one third and not, you know, you could have given them their, like double their salary or so, I mean, was it resource constraints or, I mean, does, do you think it, it matters? Is there some, you know, do you think it's convex or I, I don't know? Yeah. That, is, that is a good point. Um, we did it mostly, uh, through, let's say, um, the recommendations of the partner NGO that works with these sort of models uh, of uh, community toilets in other areas of India, um, and through extensive piloting efforts in which we were trying to understand, we formed workshops with caretakers, with cluster managers of caretakers, and we were trying to understand the contractual structure and more or less which would be a sort of, uh, of an acceptable bonus that would encourage them. And, and also the conditionalities that we're giving them are also a function of things that they had, um, let's say, the power to change because we didn't want to incentivize them on things that were, re they were resource constrained. These are things that essentially is ensuring that there are no visible feces, that soap is around in the facilities and that they can keep um, bacteria count to minimum by using disinfectant. So these are things that they are able to use. Um, there's, there is, of course, um, work done by Nava Ashraf and, and Oriana um, on the importance of how financial rewards can work in prosocial motivation tasks like this. Uh, like, like the provision of sanitation facilities for the community, thinking that these caretakers, many of them are living in these communities. So some of them are even living in the community toilet, um, but that they are only effective when they are large enough and for those that are from a low socioeconomic background. And that's exactly what happens in this context. The caretaker it has a very low level of education. His salary is quite low. So these financial incentives are large enough to, 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 for them to exert more effort. 
And that's what we can observe here through an impact in the routing maintenance that they are conducting. But interestingly, there's also an effect. Uh, so these, all these improvements are accompanied by an effect on non-payment exactly during the incentive period. Um, non-payment, uh, the, the effect of the treatment arm on non-payment is a reduction in nine percentage points, which is equivalent to 17% drop uh, in non-payment over the control mean. Um, and interestingly, this exactly in the same period, this is accompanied by a response, a, a strategic response from the caretaker side uh, that we didn't incentivize. So essentially what they are doing is they are now increasing the share of the time that they allocate to monitoring activities rather than directly operating activities that will be keeping them away from the entrance of the community toilet where they are enforcing uh, the payment of the fee. So um, what, what else do we do? I mean, besides uh, monitoring and um, kind of cleaning, I mean, yes. That it's, that's a good question because it's important to understand the multitasking problem. So caretakers are supposed to be conducting the cleaning themselves and the repairs in the facility. Um, they also have a cleaner that comes and helps them for some hours during the day. So they have to supervise the cleaner, but mostly they have to be sitting in the front of the, of the community toilet collecting the fee. But obviously conducting those other activities are important for the quality of the service is keeping them away from the entrance because that's inside the facility. And people can, uh, can, can essentially use the community toilet without paying the moment the caretaker is, is making a repair or is fixing something. So it's like they are understanding that if they're incentivized to keeping the toilet clean, that can be done in two different ways. One is through routine maintenance, which they are improving but also through collecting uh, greater revenues because they can reinvest them in the facility and also preventing overcrowding of the facility. The more users enter, the more they're gonna be making it dirty. So they are now only, only gonna be allowing them, apparently it's the evidence that we find is supporting that if they are paying the fee. Um, so that obviously has consequences on the other side of the market, on the demand and how they can react to this, to this change in the supply of the basic service. So to understand how the other side of the market replies, we're gonna be conducting some lab on the field experiments to measure behavior from potential free riders. So those people that do not have access to a private sanitation, and the only option that they have is either use the, the facility or conduct uh, or free ride, essentially practice open defecation in the common property area. Um, so we're gonna be uh, eliciting willingness to pay through an incentive compatible method, but we wanna disentangle willingness to pay from ability to pay. So as I said before, the, mar the market price is five rupees and for an average household of four individuals uh, using the community every day and for a month, the total city expenditure is equivalent to 8% of their household income, which can seem relatively high, but at the same time is lower than how much they spend on intoxicants. But of course, there is heterogeneity in their ability to pay, and we want to get rid of that, and we want to measure willingness to pay. So for that, we give them the two options. Option A is a bundle of 10 tickets to use the community toilet for free, of course, and option B is an amount of cash. So giving away cash is essentially they are, they are paying for it, but we're not asking money from them. Um, so each of these independent questions are asked, would you prefer A or B, tickets, 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 or cash? And we are increasing the bid, the, the offer that we're making in cash. And the switch from tickets to cash is what we're gonna be, what, what is gonna allow us to capture willingness to pay. Um, at the end, we tell them there's gonna be a random lottery. They're gonna take out a ball and the ball with the question number, then they're gonna be essentially paid um, based on the corresponding choice that they made. Let's say in, um, if the question that comes out in the ball is number seven and they chose tickets, they're gonna be getting the tickets. So they'll have uh, 10 times for free um, uh, to use the community toilet or they're gonna be receiving 30 rupees, which is equivalent to three rupees per ticket that they have just given away. Using this incentive compatible uh, elicitation of willingness to pay 
for their potential free riders, we are able to estimate effects on private valuation. And we find that there are no overall willingness to no overall effects on willingness to pay, but just a temporary crowding out effect right after the grant uh, was provided, so during the grant period. Um, and when well, we ask, I, I don't understand, Antonella, I don't understand if you can go back to your table. So if the price was five rupees, so nobody should take more than uh, you know ten tickets for fifty-five rupees. I mean, the the two last options kind of should be really like. Uh, you, you, you take the 55 rupees and your 60 rupees and you can actually buy more than 10 tickets. So well, I, I don't understand or, or... Exactly. But um, that, is, that is the point that we also, we also thought. So the first thing, we didn't want to have it truncated. So we offer also more than 55 and 60 rupees, which is more expensive than what they can go and, um, and, and, and get in the community toilet. But we didn't want to truncate it for some people that really wanted to prove and show how much willing they were to contribute to this public good. But on the other side, as you will say, like, why would you, why would you be saying 10 rupees if you can grab the 10 tickets and go out and sell them? Yeah. The first thing is that we're controlling this, this thing in the field and they cannot sell the tickets. So the caretakers have like the ID of the house and they quite know everybody in the community and nobody else that didn't play the game could be using these tickets. And people value so, a lot. So they know, they know that when you when they play the game, they know they cannot sell. I mean, you 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 tell them or, or exactly they know they cannot yeah. sell okay. these tickets. So essentially, what we're capturing is their preference for cash. So these tickets, for many of them, are just a this utility. They don't want to use the community toilet, meaning that it's just like uh, us receiving a flyer from a restaurant we don't want to go and this flyer is just too annoying so we prefer even if we know the market price of that is higher we prefer if you tell me well i'll give you i'll give you a lower a lower price for that restaurant but in cash and i might just say yeah cash i really don't want to go there um so that's essentially what we're capturing here mm -hmm. um so, so we don't find overall effects on that, but a crowd, a temporary crowding out effect on their willingness to pay for it or a willingness to contribute privately to the community toilet during the grant period, which is in line with, um, which is in line with the literature on crowding out from external intervention. But what we are providing here as a novelty is that this is done in the in the setting of a public service. Um, um, delivery in a, in a slum with important consequences for public health. We estimate the inverse demand curve. So on the y-axis, we have the share of the respondents and the, the x-axis, the, the rupees um, that we are, so essentially the price for one use in the community toilet in rupees. And we are finding that the demand is, the demand for the treatment arm, which is this uh, solid line is shifting inwards. So um, essentially in lower prices, a lower share of people are saying they would be willing to pay for that. And this zero is, is, if anything, a statement from people saying, not even at zero, I would pick those tickets. <laughs> um, and that is not observed towards the tail of the, of the demand curve and nor towards the incentive period. So this seems to be a temporary shift in the demand from the fact that they can observe that there was an external intervention that improved their community toilet, which they attributed to the government. They thought it was a public intervention. And that is in line with the fact that indeed, this is not valuation. It's not that they are not valuing the community toilet. We're finding this shift, this temporary crowd out in willingness to pay during the grant scheme as well, um, captured by the uh, likelihood of the potential free riders saying that they appreciate and perceive an improvement in their community toilet. So then we're trying to understand um, a little bit how we have shifted their attitudes towards the public good in terms of who should be in charge of this. Um, and for that, we distribute voice to the people cards in which we tell them you can report the key issue in your community and the results are going to be shared with public officers, which we did. So this was an incentivized measure as well. They could select one of all of these issues, but the key ones that we're going to be focusing on, like the relative focus on that, will be the operation and maintenance of the community toilet and free riding in the slum. And in this table, I'm presenting the 
treatment effects of the maintenance, T, arm, on the demand for public intervention in terms of the likelihood of the participant or the potential free rider, um, saying that the quality of the basic service is the key issue that the government should, um, should, should, should be in charge of in the community. And there is an increase by five percentage points of saying that this is the key issue, uh, translate, which translates into an increase of 53% over the baseline level. And this is accompanied by a decrease in other issues, but the key one that decreases is the focus on free riding. So the likelihood of saying that free riding is the key issue in their community uh, is reducing by seven percentage points, which is equivalent to dropping 17% over the baseline mean of the, or the control group mean, sorry. Um, we don't find that we are shifting cooperation with the treatment. So essentially what is happening is that we are shifting the focus towards where do they want more government responsiveness? And that's essentially in the provision of the, of the, of the public service. Now, before we were talking about a greater enforcement in paying the fee, and we have seen that from the demand side, there's also a bit more reluctance now to pay the fee. So these two, uh, uh, like this interaction in both sides of the market, um, essentially what we want to understand is how they result in free riding, overall free riding. So we have break, we, we broke the vicious cycle of having a low quality community toilet with low payment. Essentially now payment is high and, and the quality of the community toilet is high, but what's happening with the marginal user? Um, and apparently what is happening is that free riding is increasing. So to measure free riding, because it's such a sensitive behavior um, to say, yes, I practice openification. Most people know that it's bad to do so. Um, um, there, the, the knowledge of the consequences of open defecation on public health are quite widespread. The government of India made it their main campaign of declaring open defecation free and, and what a shame it is to practice it. So people are well aware of why that is bad. So to measure that quite well, we, we use a state-of-the-art uh, method for sensitive behaviors, to measure sensitive behaviors called least randomization. And what we do is we randomly allocate individuals to either a short list of three trivial activities or a long list that includes the sensitive behavior. And we ask them, which of the activities did you perform yesterday? And the, um, the difference in means between the short and the long list is essentially the share of those practicing the sensitive behavior because it has been randomly allocated. Hence, we assume that the difference in the trivial activities is balanced. Uh, and then here we are plotting that share, but splitting it by the control and the treatment group. And we can see that uh, the control group essentially practices OD by more than twice. The, the, sorry, the treatment group essentially practices OD by more than twice and the control group, which is consistent with a green scheming from the caretaker side among users. And we find some evidence that these users are the marginal users that they used to go to the toilet for free, but now they, the effective fee is not zero anymore. Now they have to pay for it, tends to be those that are the poorest ones that are being then going to the outside option, which is performing free riding um, in the form of open defecation. And that essentially is leading to worsening health. So we find that exactly the same period in which we are measuring this increase in open defecation from the treatment, we're also estimating uh, that the likelihood of reporting having positive curative healthcare expenditures um, is increasing uh, by um, five percentage points. So, so, so far- by Expenditure by, yeah. by who? What is it for curative expenditures? But these are the exactly the same potential free riders that we are um, surveying. They are yeah. reporting that the likelihood of having uh, positive curative expenditures are higher in the treatment group, which is exactly the same ones that are exposed mm -hmm. to the greater externality from larger free riding as a result from the green scheming that is happening on the supply side. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this model, this essentially this, this, is, this is based on a, on a model of public service delivery that funds the operation and maintenance from user fees. Um, and, and we analyze now the mechanisms behind the trade-off that we find that 
So in this model, you can find a higher service quality, but at the expense of free riding. So I can see I have 20 minutes that we might want to leave open for discussion, but let me go fast through the model because we find some interesting things about the effective fee. Um, so essentially, a potential free rider, a resident I, has uh, two options, either accessing the service by paying a fee or by free riding the common property and contaminating the community. Um, and the share of residents who choose the service is R, and those who free ride is just one minus R. And the residents are heterogeneous in the parameter theta, which is the taste difference that favors free riding. Higher theta, higher benefit they get from free riding, which is something that happens a lot in India. A lot of people actually enjoy open defecation, being in the bush, and um, um, essentially re releasing themselves under the stars. Um, so the externality in this case is increasing in the share of free riders in the slum. Um, we make an assumption that the severity of the externality is heterogeneous in the choice of the actions. So essentially those practicing free riding are suffering much more from the externality than those that are able to use the community toilet. So the utility of, uh, in, of resident I from action A equal to F, so free riding, is given by the benefit uh, in free riding, which is theta, minus the externality in health that they are perceiving. Um, and the, the expected utility derived by this resident I from action using the service is given by the quality of the service minus the effective fee, because that's the cost they need to pay, minus the externality that still affects them, even though they are using the service. And for a given share R, resident I will be choosing the service only if the expected utility of the service is greater than the utility they get from free riding, which is their only outside option. So in equilibrium, we find that the share R star uh, of, of, of those that use the service is gonna be given, is gonna be a function of the quality of the service and uh, minus the cost of using the service, which is given by the effective fee. So, but in order to achieve higher quality of the service, you also have to increase the effective fee. So that's when you can see that there is a trade-off between quality attracting more users by raising, raising the benefit of the service but also by increasing the effective fee, which is a, the, the cost of choosing the service that is gonna push in some of them to practice open defecation. Um, so, so then the, the point when, when we try to understand then this trade-off is saying, okay, how do we achieve an R equal to one? One way is uh, back on the, of the envelope calculation is that the cost of, of providing an improved service is just 1.3 to 2.8 times the current cost of providing uh, operational maintenance to the, to, to the community toilet. And this can be fully covered by completely eradicating non-payment in the slum. But we're trying to understand then what determines non-payment. Um, and for that, we conduct a mediation analysis in which essentially allows us to decompose the treatment effect on non-payment, which was nine percentage points, on different outcomes from the supply and the demand side. And we can see that while the supply side is reducing non-payment, so these blue ones are quality, so the better the quality, the lower the non-payment, and the more the caretaker's effort to, to enforce the fee payment and monitor, um, uh, and, and monitor the entrance, then essentially free riding is decreasing while the opposite happens with demand side factors. So private valuation, while private valuation is also decreasing non-payment, uh, their demand for public intervention and uh, it's essentially pushing it towards the other side, towards an increasing non-payment. So essentially lots of these users are saying this service is basic, is my right, and I should be having it for free. And it, it is those let's say with the, let's say this theta for those are higher, those are the ones that are gonna be uh, dropping off. And th those are the ones that are gonna be essentially affected by the cream scheming now that they really don't wanna pay for it. So that is not socially desirable. Uh, we have seen that the overall welfare cost is quite high in terms of pre-writing increasing even further and uh, health um, being even more affected. So 
that leads to the question then, shall we just provide these services for free and move away from this financing model relying on users to just an effective fee of zero? Would that be enough to set our star equal to one? Um, so what we do is we essentially are able to exploit random variation in the effective fee coming from the willingness to pay game. So essentially the, the endogenous variable, which is what is the effective fee that they are receiving and that they are, they, are, they are facing is gonna be instrumented by whether or not they got tickets given the lottery in the willingness to pay game, which is completely random. Um, and getting tickets is essentially changing whether they have access to the toilet for free or not. So we find that an increase in one rupee in the effective fee leads to an increase in different specifications between 3.1 and 3.8 percentage points in free riding, as expected, so a drop in R. But if we want to set R equal to 1, then we can plug into this estimate to calculate C C uh, hat star. So essentially we plug in the estimates that we, we replace R equal to one, we plug in estimate, we use data of the overtime change that we observe in the quality of the toilet. And we also plug in this effective fee, which is instrumented to find. Um, so, so essentially we are, we, are, we are using this estimate to find the effective fee. Um, and here, what we find is that the structural estimate of, of C star ranges between minus six to minus 4.8 rupees. So eradicating free riding uh, would need not only to subsidize the use of the service, so the effective fee is not zero, but we will have to subsidize it beyond making it for free or increasing the costs associated with free riding. So essentially, for example, imposing fines. Now, the problem of paying people to come and use the community toilet is that that's gonna generate overcrowding uh, and that's gonna lead to being even more costly to sustain the community toilet. Um, and that's why we also observe that free to use community toilets are were found in highly degraded status in, in the study area. So the other option is then, okay, let's find the free riders but the problem is that that's quite difficult in Islam with such low socioeconomic uh, background in which people might not have anything to pay the fines. Um, and also, um, Navarra's paper find that fines for the adoption of public services can lead to extortion in low uh, institutional quality environments. So can you tell us roughly how many people use one uh, community toilet? Uh... Yes. Each so, day. I mean, what, what's the population of one? Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, there are around 11% of the whole slum. So let's say a slum can have more than 100 people. Um, and out of that, we get a sample of, let's say, 15 per slum, and we're able to follow them. And out of them, 11% practice open defecation, but some of them still use the toilet. Almost almost 100% of those that we interviewed use the toilet because this is the only facility that they have. But some days they may perform open defecation, some other days they may use the slum. But imagine that the, the, the outside option, um, essentially, if they don't perform open defecation, is just using the community toilet, meaning that, let's say 100 people throughout the day may be in need of this community toilet. And the community toilet may have 10 um, um, cubicles. So it's quite easy to be, become overcrowded if not, if, if let's say if this, if, if this uh, intervention is not accompanied by also an effort of connecting people directly to, to private sanitation. Um, but this can be, this can be combined with, let's say, different efforts to expand the capacity of the community toilet if demand exists. But so, but right now, the problem is that the demand is not quite there. A lot of people are preferring to go for open defecation. Um, so our conclusion is that while supply side incentives can be effective at improving the quality and reducing non-payments or breaking the vicious cycle, that's actually generating some unintended consequences from the demand side because that's essentially leading to green scheming among 
the marginal user and that is now going to perform free riding um, and that's worsening public health, which is the ultimately important thing for welfare. Um, and we also find indications that there's a challenge for financial viability, given that an external intervention as such can crowd out private contribution and increase the demand for public intervention on the provision of the service. So the implication for future research is that enforcing financial sustainability may not actually be socially desirable, um, but you still need to ensure that there is a high quality facility um, because we know that they have high returns, they can generate also high returns um, for, for, for in, in terms of social benefits and, and, and private benefits as well from experiencing a, a high level quality service. Hence, we need to understand optimal pricing to eradicate free riding and ensure that everybody can be using this facility without overcrowding at different times of the day. So for example, models in which there is price discrimination among users or also times of the, of the day can help. Um, or for example, that's in line with your question of how to, how to uh, Helena, like how to reduce overcrowding in a situation in which capacity is restrained. Um, and also we can try to understand in future research, which are the effectiveness of subsidies only for the poorest, since they seem to be the ones most affected by the cream scheming. So that's opening up for a big research agenda and more research on this. So thank you very much. And I look forward to further questions and comments. Thank you.